welcome back. So, we have now so far discussed about risk as, as, an, as an endemic feature of problems of decision making under uncertainty. The second feature that I wanted to talk to you about is the role of information. That information is a, plays an extremely critical role in in uh, in uh, in problems of decision making un under uncertainty, and the way uh, and problems of and such problems differ uh, in their characteristics, in differ in the kind of solutions you can get, based uh, based on the way you uh, based on what you've been told about the information about in the problem. So a simple illustration of this is is the following example. So, consider a system uh, which has a scalar state, okay. a system with a scalar state now this system uh, evolves in the uh, in in the following linear fashion over two time steps okay so the system starts with uh, uh, get, uh, suppose starts with some uh, at time step 1 is is given in this in the following way it's given as as u0 plus w0 and at time step 2 is given by x1 plus u1 now what are these uh, what are these variables here x1 and x2 are these are the uh, the state this is these denote the state of the system at times 1 comma 2 respectively this is uh, this is x1 and x2 u0 and u1 these are decisions that you need to make so these are variables whose values we need to find w0 is an act of nature w0 comes from uh, the uh, from the environment so w0 is a random variable so w0 is a random variable taking values plus 1 or minus 1 with probability half each so it takes values plus 1 or minus 1 with probability half so you can think of w0 as some kind of an initial state or you can think of it as a, as as a disturbance or noise that affects the system it, whatever you would uh, uh, interpretation you would prefer is something you can take point, uh, point is that once you have w0 uh, there is w0 and then there is an action uh, u0 that you choose that results in x1 x then there is another action u1 that you choose so that x1 plus u1 then results in x2 the problem for us is our problem find u0 u1 to minimize the expected value of the absolute value of x2 ok this is the problem now we uh, let us try to now see how we can how we can approach this problem now here I have told you that what have I told you about u0 and u1 I have told you that these are decisions that we need to make I have not yet told you what exactly do you know when you need to take those decisions so as a result this problem uh, what we are going to assume in the first version of this problem is that these are decisions that are going to be made without any knowledge at all okay without any no, any knowledge so these decisions are being made before knowing anything about about the system 
notice that the system there are many stages at which you would get information about the system. For example, you would you could get information about W0, you could then get information about X1, you could get an information about X2 itself. Uh, now, uh, X2 is resulting from U1. So, knowing X2 at this uh, beforehand while choosing U0 and U1 does not make sense. However, you could potentially know something else in between. Right. So, so as therefore, use uh, for example, you could choose say you could choose u1 based on what is known about x1. Right. A lot of these things can potentially be done, but right now we are assuming that we do not know anything at all about u0 and u1 uh, while choose sorry we do not know anything at all while choosing u0 and u1. Okay. So, therefore, u0 and u1 therefore are deterministic. So, because they are not functions of anything that any of the randomness in the problem, they are essentially just deterministic, the deterministic scalars that we need to uh, that we need to choose, whose values we need to choose. Okay. So, let us just let us let us try to uh, solve this problem then. So, our problem is to minimize this the absolute value of x2. So, the absolute value of x2 let me write that as as in terms of uh, in terms of x in terms of what we know. So, the x absolute value of x 2 is x 2 is just x 1 plus plus u 1 and x 1 itself is u 0 plus w 0. So, this is u 0. So, what we get is u 0 plus u 1 plus w 0. Now, use w0 can take two possible values plus 1 or minus 1. So, this expect uh, each with probability half. So, this expectation then ev uh, evaluates to half times u0 plus u1 plus 1 plus another half times u0 plus u1 minus 1. This is uh, this is what this expectation evaluates to. Now, let us be careful here we, what is we have the way we have evaluated this expectation we have assumed that the only thing that is random in this the only enti uh, entity that is random in this expression here is is w0 the only random quantity is w0. So, as a result we that is how we get this, get to this expression. Now, let us think of what this expression is basically saying it is it is uh, this expression is saying well here is my here is suppose my real line here is minus 1 here is 1 and so this this expression is basically asking you to evaluate the sum um, uh, the sum of u the distance of u0 plus u1 from 1 and the distance of u0 plus u1 from minus 1. So, suppose u0 plus u1 suppose is here u0 plus u1 is here this quantity here is uh, is the distance of u0 plus u1 from minus 1. So, this here is u0 plus u1 uh, plus 1 and this distance here is is u0 plus u1 uh, u1 my absolute value of u0 plus u1 minus 1 right. But u0 plus u1 could also be on the other side of of minus 1 and 1 for example, u0 plus u1 could be here. The other possibility is that u0 plus u1 could be on on say the left of minus 1 so for instance. So, in that case this here is the distance. Uh, this here would be the distance from u0 plus u1 to minus 1. So, u0 plus u1 plus 1 the absolute value of this and the distance of u0 plus u1 to 1 would be this. Now, you can see uh, there would be obviously a symmetric case with u0 plus u1 lying on the other side of 1. Now, it is very evident by, by looking at this figure that uh, whenever u0 plus u1 is either to the left of minus 1 or to the right of 1, 
in either of these cases this uh, that would not be the right choice for u0 plus u1 because you are you are this 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 the sum of these distances that we are trying to minimize here would actually be uh, much larger. So, consequently the optimal one to uh, for us to choose would be one where u0 plus u1 is actually between plus and between plus minus 1 and plus 1 ok. And in that case actually what is this the sum once u0 plus u1 is in fact between minus 1 to 1 the sum of this this objective here which is half of half of this distance plus half of that distance would actually evaluate uh, would actually evaluate to just eventually just 1 right. So, what we are uh, what we conclude is that this the, the minimum of this minimum over u0 u1 of the the uh, the expected absolute value of x2 is in is equal to 1 and the minimum is attained when q0 plus u1 is between plus 1 and minus 1. You can just take any u0 and u1 so long as they are their sum is between plus 1 and minus 1 and that gives you the minimum the minimum of this of this particular problem right. So, you can you can see uh, what, what uh, uh, the that that we can that here the opt the object the the actual optimal decisions are uh, are multiple there could be in that means there are there is a multitude of optimal decisions but the the uh, the optimal value is uh, uh, is one for uh, for any of them now what is uh, now what here we remember what we assumed was that u0 and u1 are, are are deterministic. So, u0 and u1 are chosen in uh, in such a way that they they are chosen before the realization of any of the, of the uncertainty in the problem ok. So, as a consequence uh, when I took the expectation here the 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 only thing that was random was w, uh, was w0. Now, what we will do is we will change we will change this assumption and we will we will assume that these u0 and u1 are actually chosen uh, not before the realization of uncertainty, but actually sequentially ok. So, we will assume that u0 and u1 are chosen in a sequence and as you go along the sequence you get more information right. So, for example, in this case, so one particular way uh, one uh, one assumption we could we will make is so now assume So, in this case here let me mark this with red earlier we had this was done assuming u0 u1 are chosen before w0 is realized. So, before this uncertainty is real. So, here now I am going to assume that u0 and u1 are cho chosen sequentially. Now, assume u0, u1 are chosen are chosen sequentially. So, what does this mean? So, u0 is chosen uh, as before. chosen as before, but u1 is chosen after x1 is realized and x1 is 
known to the decision maker while while choosing u1 now this is extremely important so u0 here is chosen as before it is chosen uh, due, uh, before the realization of w0 but u1 while choosing u1 you actually have the knowledge of x1 okay so in order to for you to have the knowledge of x1 you have to wait for it to get realized so it is obviously chosen after x1 is is realized and it is and after x1 is realized you in fact also know what x1 in fact is now this this now changes the problem see what we now have is that you are not choosing a u, u0 and u1 before uh, the uh, before before the uncertainty is realized but you have the possibility now of adapting your choice of u1 to what what situation actually arises right so this information actually changes the number of options you have effectively what what you earlier you were you were required to pick only a particular value for uh, for uh, for u0 and u1 now u1 can be chosen as a function of the uh, information that you have so u1 can therefore be can now be chosen in a way that it uh, such that it adapts to the information that is that will get realized okay so so what would be the optimal uh, optimal thing to do in this case in this case we can't really we, we shouldn't really talk of one particular thing to do what we should really talk about is what should we should do in each situation based on what gets realized right so the optimal thing to do is now not a, just an action or a particular value but rather a, an entire policy or an entire plan of actions that we need that we want to choose so so the it turns out in this case that the optimal thing to do is let us let us try let's try to think of what the optimal thing to do is so again let me write out the expected value of this and is equal to x2 remember was x1 plus u1 so this the expected value of x2 is x x1 plus u1 now x1 is known to me while i choose when i am choosing u1 okay x1 is known to me when i am choosing u1 so what should i take u1 as in order to minimize this particular expression what i should do is simple, the answer is simple i just take u1 to be negative of x1 i just take u1 to be negative uh, uh, ne so since i know x1 when i am choosing u1 i can choose u1 as a function of x1 and so the answer uh, the optimal thing for me to do is then choose u1 not as a specific value but uh, one, uh, something that is adapted to the information that i have since i have the information of u, uh, of x1 i am going to be choosing uh, u1 as negative of x1 so choose u1 equal to negative of x1 now what happens to my choice of u0 well u0 did not even feature into the problem you can see that it doesn't matter what uh, what u0 is actually chosen as so u0 choose u0 as any scalar so with this what i get is u1 equal with u1 equal to minus x1 my uh, this would give me that the expected absolute value of x2 is actually equal to 0 and when this is uh, and this is the obviously the uh, the least possible value uh, the the absolute value of x2 can take so consequently this 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 here is is therefore the optimal solution so notice here that u0 did not matter at all in the optimal solution you could have taken u0 to be 5 10 whatever value you want the reason it did not matter is because you had all the information that you needed to make the objective value to take uh, to, to get uh, the objective value to its minimum possible value 
when you were choosing uh, uh, when you were choosing u1 so with the knowledge of x1 you could there it was possible to bring down the objective value eventually to 0 when you have that particular knowledge right so so this is how you can see the uh, that there has been a difference in the object the optimal value of the objective based on the information that you had in our earlier example the optimal the optimal value of the objective turned out to be 1 okay the minimum value that you could get was 1 with in this in this case the minimum value in this case the minimum value is the minimum value in this case is equal to 0. Now notice here that we cannot just simply write this as an optimization uh, problem because we are not looking at looking for just scalar values you need to write you need to be careful about what the what information is being uh, supplied when while choosing every decision. So here this is being uh, this is minimized such that u0 is any scalar and u1 is any function of x1 right in that case uh, the optimal value that we get is uh, is zero so what we are see what we have seen here therefore is the role of information if you are given if you are given information uh, if if you change the the information structure of the problem or uh, if you change wh what is known at various time steps the pro the nature of the problem changes the the optimal value of the problem changes the optimal decisions that you can take also change so with this uh, what we have learned is we we uh, we have we have learned two important aspects one is one is the issue of risk the other is the issue of of information through some simple examples what we will do in the uh, in the subsequent lectures now is that we will start uh, we will start coming uh, writing out formal models of sequential decision making in which both of these aspects which is the issue of risk as well as the issue of uncertainty uh, as well as the issue of uh, information will play an important role. So in the following lectures we will see uh, we will see a sequen a formal model of sequential decision making okay. thank you.